And then we have just over a thousand boxes downstairs of, you know, world wars and people around the world and all kinds of stuff and Hollywood stars, which people do use those, or baseball players, very popular for baseball players. Um, but the most used parts of it are the San Francisco local photos. And we've digitized about 45,000 of those so far. That was San Francisco City Archivist Susan Goldstein. I'm Jeff. And this is Storied San Francisco. Every week on this podcast, you'll hear from historians, community leaders, bartenders, and San Franciscans from all walks of life, telling stories, sharing personal histories, and trying to put into words what makes this city so special. Welcome to episode 39, part two. In part one, Susan talked about moving to the Bay Area in 1984 and finding archiving work at SF State and with U.S. Senator Alan Cranston. In this podcast, she goes into depth about getting her current job of city archivist. If you're half as nerdy about city history as I am, get ready. Here's Susan. So I moved back up here and I was like, what am I going to do? And there were some jobs and I was like, I don't want to do those jobs. And then there was this job to be city archivist. And I was like, that's the job that I want. And how did you find it? Oh, how did we used to advertise in those days? I don't know. I guess it was... Job boards, papers. It wasn't on a listserv. Maybe it was by then. Okay. Because in library school, we were first learning about HTML. Our mm-hmm. professor was like, this is so interesting. There's this thing called the web. And then these are this hypertext, you know, and you can click on it and go to another site. And all of us were like, whoa. <laughs> so, um, so by then there must have been, I don't remember, but it was pretty broadly advertised. I know many, many people applied for it across the country. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when you saw the listing though, were you like double take? I like, was, I was like, Oh my God, I want to do this job. Yeah. And there, you were, in other words, yeah. you were me when I found your name and I was, and then I looked up your titles like what? <laughs> yes. Kind of. Yeah. And I knew that it had existed and there was a woman who had run this department for many years. Um, As a city archivist, Gladys Hansen, she's, her name is very well known, um, but she wasn't really an archivist. Um, She kind of grew up in the library and into this job, but she was very into collecting history. And then she had been gone for about five years and they finally advertised the job. They were waiting for me. Exactly. Clearly, they were waiting (laughs) for me. Well, they didn't have to sit on their hands for five years. So you think... We were moving from the old building across the street to the new building. So I started in the old building, which is now the Asian Art Museum. Mm -hmm. I was across the street, Mm -hmm. up on the top floor. And then when you move a collection, you learn about it very well. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a great thing to do to have to move the collection. I can think of comparing that maybe to like when you move residences yes. like you find all the you're stuff like, oh, you had yeah. no idea or you forgot about and or, or you're like I don't even I didn't know I had this and I didn't even live here so to speak like, right I was new right and then it was like oh we have this oh we have this that's actually kind of an awesome way to I don't say train but to yeah, acquaint to acquaint yourself it really with was the collection at the time yeah so I was pretty ecstatic to start here were you overwhelmed I mean, San Francisco by American standards is not an old city, but it's a city rich in history, like crazy rich in history. I wasn't overwhelmed. I kind of knew what I wanted to do. The city didn't have a real strong archives established, and I felt like that was my job, to establish a really strong archival program, to establish um, standards, practices, and procedures like other institutions followed. You know, I had a lot of that groundwork to do, Mm -hmm. and it was good. I was way into it. So ch- the, so the challenge, you're like, yeah, let's do I this. Yeah, I was very into it. And, you know, over the years, our staff has grown enormously. Like, how can I get more staff people here? And also when I got here, there were um, the SF history things that were here, but also they had started um, accepting gay and lesbian collections as part of the whole new main library and the move to the new main. So all of a sudden, I was in charge of those. Oh. Um, 
Is that what became Hormel? Or? Yeah. Okay, got it. It was the founding of the Hormel Center. So I wasn't the manager of the Hormel Center, but I was in charge of the Hormel collections. Got it. So the manager was buying the books and the periodicals, but they there were all these collections all of a sudden, like Harvey Milk's papers and Randy Schultz's papers and Harry Hayes' papers, and nobody really knew how to work on them or what to do with them. So those were there too. So it was pretty exciting. I mean, for an archivist, it's pretty darn exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, maybe I'm jumping ahead and we can talk about this later, but, um, as, as you're just mentioning the Hormel, like you, you said papers and papers and I'm thinking like, but there were, there's also photos, photos and film and right. all sorts of media. So right? I just encompass all that in the term papers. papers. Got yeah. it. Okay. So when you do, um, individuals, uh, materials, it's called papers. And when you do organizational ones, it's called records, which is even more confusing to people. <laughs> Although, although young people don't even know what records are, so maybe exactly. it's not so confusing. Yeah. So that's just kind of these formal archives terms, but papers versus records. But both of them can contain many formats. Got it. Yeah. Got and it. so, yes. And I and there was a huge photo collection when I got here because we have the um, photo morgue of the News Call Bulletin newspaper, mm-hmm. So, which was a merger of several papers over many years. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a huge collection. And you, you guys have their entire collection yes. yeah, wow. yeah. So, sorry you have all their records <laughs> all their photos <laughs> okay yeah, we have the whole collection so that's a big one so the san francisco materials a lot of those have been pulled out separated out and are in our photo room and then we have just over a thousand boxes downstairs of you know world wars and people around the world and all kinds of stuff and hollywood stars which people do use those or baseball players very popular for baseball players Wow. Um, but the most used parts of it are the San Francisco local photos. And we've digitized about 45,000 of those so far. Yeah. Over time, right? Over time. It wasn't just, yeah. Yeah. That's no, it impressive, took a long time. though. It's yeah. really impressive. It's not the digitizing, it's the metadata. Right. <laughs> That'll get you. We have an Epson flatbed, but we also have a very large um, new one, a DT overhead we could do oversize on. Um, so we can do posters or some of our oversized prints. But most of the ones go on an Epson flatbed. And we even, this is very technical, but let's just nerd out here for a minute. But, um, you know, we have a lot of older formats like glass plates. And our in-house team is just like constructed little cardboard things. So we get the best for the glass plate because you don't want the glass on the glass. Um, you probably don't deal with glass plate a lot, but, and negatives, you know, and so we're digitizing all kinds of formats that we have to problem solve for. Because City Hall, when the City Hall was rebuilt and reopened, they did a big exhibit there and they used our photos, a lot of our photos, and they were blown up hugely and hung on the walls. They looked spectacular. It's beautiful yeah, photo. yeah. Beautiful. Actually, we just had a show we just saw last week mm-hmm. that opened at the airport of Harvey Milk's. Oh about it's after the Harvey Milk Terminal, yeah. Terminal 1, which is named after him, and mm-hmm. they used a ton of our photos and manuscripts. And when we walked in there and saw those blown up so big on the wall, I mean, one of our staff started crying. It was just pretty incredible. I'm the kind of person who looks at this stuff at the, yeah. at the airport. And starts to cry? Well, not necessarily. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> yeah, the typewriter collection blew me oh, away. No, I no but, that. but I did. I mean, I, I love I, that. And the maps. We had one of our big yeah. sandboard maps in that one. I'm not. I'm not bullshitting. Like I, I oh, yeah. SFO has really good. Oh yeah, exhibits. They have great exhibits. It's like you know, not only the thrill of going wherever I'm going. I'm like, yeah, yeah I get to see whatever's at the airport. I know. Seriously. I know. And so their you guys team are... is great there. We've worked with them over the years on a number of things, but this was a big collaboration with them. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. I don't think I've had occasion to go to Terminal One since. The... Well, it's not open yet. It's oh, still okay. under construction, okay. and they're going to put out a press release this week, and I hope it'll have a lot of groovy pictures in it. Yeah. And then it should open towards the end of July, okay. and it's um, wow, just like campaign literature from Harvey, and like personal a picture, a childhood photo of him with his big ears sticking out, and you know all the way. What are some of your favorite things that you guys have been involved in, both um, acquiring? but then working with things like the, the airport. Right. Um, so a lot of what we do is working with other city departments. And I know it maybe sounds boring, but it really can be fascinating. So when Jerry Brown closed all the redevelopment agencies around the state, 
all of a sudden we got a call from redevelopment and they had 40 cartons of photographs of Western Edition and your Buena Center and what used to be in those neighborhoods and what is there now, um, plus all of their other projects that they've done over the years. So I just, stuff like that is fascinating to me. Um, and then just last month, the Assessor Recorder's Office turned over 94,000 photos of San Francisco properties to us. And it was a big project. We worked for a couple of years because they had to organize it and then we had to make it so people could access these. And they're not digital. People have to come in here to use them. And there are these amazing photos of you know, people's houses and hotels and restaurants and some random alleys thrown in and all different neighborhoods. And so they're great for people who just want to know about their house right? or people who just want to know about their neighborhood mm -hmm. and they'll spread out a whole bunch on a street. And in fact, one of the neighborhood groups is doing a walking tour using a lot of these photos this coming weekend, cool. Sunnyside. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also people who just want to know a lot more than that, you know, broader patterns across the city mm. or development or cars <laughs> no but you know you know really looking at more um larger issues i would say than just one immediate house so it's just so great to see how people use the collections how far back do those photos go they go not that far they go to the 1940s which okay. isn't really that early to me right. um and then the other thing we have is a uh, department of public works transferred over 99 photo albums they're just incredible, and they're of the rebuilding of the city after the earthquake and then kind of every day. So they go from about the 19-teens into the 1940s, hmm. and they used to just have a photographer on staff, and they would send this person out every day, and this person would just take pictures. This street is being paved. This is, you know, how the curbs are. Here are a bunch of sewers. But meanwhile, there's just thousands of photos of street life, people on the street, workers hanging out with In these. In the 19-teens? Yeah, these oh contraptions, God. these trucks they use to clean the street or pave the street, you know? And, and once you start looking at these albums, like, I just feel lost. Like, I just want to look at them forever. And I love it when other people come in and they're like, I can't stop looking at this. <laughs> right, you're like, the <laughs> library's closing, you guys. I know, I know. <laughs> but they're incredible. And they're not digitized, so we would love to digitize some of those. Um, Are you going to digitize wonderful. the ones from the assessor recorder? You know, that and maybe is a, map, that's, map them or whatever. What yeah. Is, what is ideally GPS, when we right. re raise the money like you do, like 94, <laughs> I hope you're better than us. 94,000 is a lot. Yeah, it is. Um, but it would be nice to do. People would like it. I have to say though, it's very nice because it brings people here mm -hmm. and they all come. We've had a lot of people using this collection over the last month and they're like, I've never been to the main library. I didn't know this was here wow. and it's pretty cool. You know, and people are like, thank you so much. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back and look for other things. Or we teach them there's other photos of your house, not just in this collection that got all the press. There's other things we can help you with, you know. Right. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then a lot of what I do is work with community groups, you know, to switch gears from city departments. Mm -hmm. um, and just from being a community organizer, that's very near and dear to my heart. So, for example, a couple of years ago, people from the Filipino community came to me and said, hey, we're not saving our history and we don't know what to do. So I started going to a bunch of their community meetings at their organizations. Over here on... Um, the Bayanahan, yeah, yeah, Mission. Mission, I was going to mm -hmm. say Howard. We just recorded a podcast there oh, you a couple did? weeks ago. Who was it? Uh, her name is Joy Ying. Oh. I can't remember exactly what her title is. She works in the basement. That's all I know. Okay. Remember. She's not doing the veterans oral histories, is she? Okay, no. that's another project there. No. So I went around and talked to all these groups there about how you can save your history and what you can do. And we ended up doing a community photo day um, which we've done about seven of over the years where people bring in their family photos or organizational Sorry. photos and we copy them for the archives. So it was so this cool. incredible day. Like so people just cool. brought in like, this is my parents immigrating from the Philippines. Right. This was the first Filipino institution that did X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. um, or this is just our family in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, so we really try to have more representation of underrepresented communities, which they are in the archives. Um, so that was great. But then since then, the last year, we've taken in about five collections from Filipino community organizations. Oh, wow. So, you know, Bindle Stiff Studio, 
um, and cool arts. Mm -hmm. And um, so Bayanahan, their um, Filipino American Development Foundation, those just came in two weeks ago. So there's always stuff happening. There's always papers of individuals and communities and organizations coming in. So we've become kind of like this, um, you know, memory repository for that community, awesome. which is really, you know, I think is one of our main roles. Yeah. What is or are the oldest artifacts, the for, items you yeah. have? Yeah. For us, it's probably um, the 1830s, wow. which isn't that old. So they're um, all call day records, you know, when the mayor was, was Mexican and transitioned to American. Um, so mostly starting around 1849, but there's some stuff a little earlier. Is Was it called Yerba Buena at that point? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it wasn't even San yeah. Francisco yet. So then we have, wow. then we start getting into the original... I mean, one myth is people think everything was destroyed in the 1906 earthquake and fire, right. and that's not true. So we still have some deed books and indexes to deeds and um, general ledgers, and those, it's not a constant stream of them. Many of them did get destroyed, but we have some very early ones that people use. Um, and the alcalde ones where people are writing about, you know, disputes between neighbors, right. and some of it's in <laughs> Spanish and some of it's in English. It goes back and forth. Wow. So the older, you know, Spanish period, colonial period, is really covered by the Bancroft Library, I would say, um, and the land grants and things like that. Mm -hmm. But we pretty much start with the founding of San Francisco. So people can wander in. First of all, we're open seven days a week, which is amazing for a special collection. Um, and anybody is welcome in as long as you follow the rules of the room, which is to sign in and check your bags with us and no pens in the room, pencils and computers and cameras are fine. And then you can request things. So we have a certain limited number of things out in the room, but then, you know, talking to the librarian on staff, we can give you a better idea of what we can pull for you, what we might have, what collections there are. And also you can go to the library catalog. Our collections, many of them, most of them are in the catalog. So you can do a search and turn up the police department records and then figure out which box to pull or we'll help you with that. We're all very nice. The staff here <laughs> is incredible. I mean, the staff, you know, the staff here works with all members of the general public. And um, it's different from a university archive or kind of a special archive. So we're used to working with a wide range of people and everybody's really into it. Um, so we're here to help you. If you want, you can call us, you can email us also and we'll answer you. And we're trying to get more and more classes in. Mm -hmm. We have high school and college classes coming. Oh, cool. um, and the high school classes are great, you know? They love this stuff. They're like, this is the real thing mm -hmm. or look at this and they're definitely into it, you know? They're ready to get away from the digitized version of it. Wow. And the college students are a little more sophisticated, but again, still, you know, primary source materials, holding stuff, holding Lily Hitchcock Coit's diary, you know, or holding a gold rush diary of someone who came around. It's a big deal. What is your favorite part of your job? So I guess it is working with donors, um, and that's mostly what I do. Um, is I work with donors. So I'm working with a woman who helped put on Carnival for a number of years, and she's working with a number of other people gathering up Carnival and how it happened in the city and where it came from and who are all the groups, so meeting with her. And again, the Filipino communities. You know, these are just long-term relationships that I have with people. And, you know, 10 years later, they're like, are you still there? And I'm like, I'm still here. I remember what we were talking about. Let's go do it, you know. And so I think it's working with donors and trying to figure stuff out and help them. And maybe stuff doesn't come here, but maybe we figure something out, you know. So for me, you know, still I think that community organizing aspect yeah. and working with people in that way. What is your favorite collection since you <laughs> brought that up? Well, right now, which because it changes, you know, all the time. Um, it's the Paul Radin papers, and he was an ethnologist during the WPA, during the Depression. And what he did was he sent out all these white-collar workers to interview immigrants from all over. So all over the country and all over the world. And these are, some are typed and some are handwritten, and they're accounts of people coming here in the late 1930s and how they came here and how they ended up here. Coming and to the U.S. or San Francisco? San Francisco. Wow. 
and it is fantastic. And I feel like it's not used enough. So I love talking about this collection because I want people to use it. I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, what was our, and it's divided like Portuguese, Greece, you know, it's <laughs> alphabetical, Irish. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so interesting. People telling their family stories of coming here. Do you feel like people were coming from almost all over the world oh, or yeah. just about? Yeah, which, you know, again, happened during the gold rush, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people are coming during the Depression and also from other states and those stories and what it's like to live during the Depression. They're talking about that also. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating. But we just signed a deed of gift with the Coalition on Homelessness, and I'm getting ready to go pack up all that crazy office. And I think that might be one of my favorite ones, too, when it comes, because I went and looked through it. That was Susan Goldstein. Join us next week when we'll hear from jeweler and metal artist Danny Macchiarini. Music for the podcast is by Otis McDonald. Film photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Find the nearly 90 episodes we've done over on our website, storiedsf.com. While you're there, please help support this project by going to our store page and checking out the various pledge levels. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay current on everything we do. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review the show for us. And if you have ideas of who should be on the podcast, our email is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you.